observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The Ravens had taken special care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. Zenobia stared at the carnage. He didn't want me to hear the witness, did he? I guess not. What's your plan? She asked. So, Renato explained his brilliant gambit. Sending Lapino to get the Ibla Stone, become super powerful and corrupted, provoke the Emperor into using the core against him, thus blowing up both of them, and hopefully the fleet too. Let me visit your council, she said, shaken. I want to help. Could he really trust her? He'd made Zenobia see how evil her father really was. He wished she didn't feel this urge to join in the rebellion. After all, he'd taken care of the Emperor, right? Yeah, but she'd always been conscientious like that. She told him she had to go somewhere first. So Renato gave her the location of the secret base and they agreed to meet in the ruins. He had a very good feeling about this. What had Zenobia gone off to do? What was more important than meeting the Rebel Council? Had he made a mistake, sending her to the ruins? No. He knew they could trust each other. He could trust her because she never broke her word. And she could trust him because she could see right through him. Well, she'd probably be there well before him. She at least didn't have to fight her way through rainstorms of ravens. Oh, she'd been an amazing rabbit. She could talk to him about comics, and talk to her son about history and battles, and talk to scholars about the ancient tomes hidden deep in the vaults of the Library of Ubar. Oh, Renato really missed her. As he came around the bend, there was Lupino, unconscious on the side of the path. And Renato could smell a familiar, sweet, smoky scent. Who? Zenobia. It had to be. She never used a combat spell when she could use drowsy gas. That meant... She had the Ibla Stone. What would it do to her? She hated her father now. She'd kill him for sure. The Council wouldn't mind if she killed the Emperor, but... Murdering her father would destroy her. He had to get to whatever ledge she was on and talk her down from it. You blinked. Long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good.
Everyone in the council chamber was dead. Zenobia stood shivering in the courtyard, drenched in blood. Why? He managed. They, they started arguing with me. I lost my temper and I, I wanted their blood. Well, not me. The stone did. Why did you take it from Lupino? I had a plan. You had a, a stupid plan, she said. I'm going to go kill my father now. No, you can't. You'll, you'll just take his place. You'll become worse than him. Get out of my way, or I'll kill you too. I won't let you kill the Emperor. Enraged, she raised the sword. You hate him too? He could sense the Iblis Stone, yearning for his death. But she didn't strike. If you kill him, he'll destroy you. I know you. Shut up! She shouted, her sword trembling. I won't lose you again. Not for anything. Get away from me! He said, and he was very close. I can't lose you again. And he was in reach of her sword now. I hate him! I hate you too! I love you, he said for the very first time. And then she was weeping. He was holding her. The sword had dropped from her hand. He glanced at the Iblis stone. It was no longer the black of the void. It looked like coal. No. It glowed like a cinder. It was crackling, burning, crumbling into ashes. You've always loved me, haven't you? She said. She was weak. The stone had taken so much from her. Always, he said. She staggered as he helped her up. Let me take you away. Where? The island of Avalon. The sisters will heal you. He will follow us. Then we need the Farfarer, the fastest ship in the Empire. The Empire had seized his ship. They'd have to take it back. You never knew where the road would take you, thought Renardo. There it was, his beautiful skycraft, the Farfarer. It would fare very far indeed, beyond the Empire, beyond the reach of the Empire, to the mystical island of Avalon. He didn't know exactly where it was, but he knew he could find it. And they would find peace there. Second star on the right, and straight on till morning, laughed Zenobia. And they laughed together for the first time in a long time.
there was a sign. Take the goat across first. 